exercise for you. And this part of the exercise you're not going to like, okay? This part of the session you might not going to like. Let's get rid of this. Uh, but this is the part where you move from risk to safety, okay? When you start looking more deeply into what is it that you're doing. So here's the first question for you, and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about it. What are the prices that you paid so far for having a low financial IQ? Anything. You can, can be from, you don't, uh, you don't get the salary, if you're an employee, the salary that you could have, uh, if it's in business that you don't make as much uh, money as you may, maybe you don't have the continuity of income, so you see yourself every couple of months, you know, in a dip and you don't know how to get out of it, maybe you have worries about finances, I mean, there's so many prices that we're paying, both in physical terms, you know, with, in our bank account or in our saving, on in our success and investment, but also on mental and emotional level of worries. I mean, I was so worried for so many years. I, you, I don't know if you can see it, but I had two of those very deep in my uh, forehead because of worrying every night, will, will we be able to put food on the table in the next month? And th this is also a price that people are paying. People are paying prices in relationships because of issues of money. So I want you to take a moment right now, and although it's not a nice exercise to do, it's important to look at it because then we can look at the other side is, and what you can do about it. What are the prices you paid so far in the past because of your low financial IQ? Just take a couple of minutes for that. When you're ready, just play the video again and we'll continue with the next part. All right, so now you looked at the prices that you paid so far for low financial IQ. And, you know, it doesn't have to be low, low, but lower than where it can be. So what I'd like you to do now is exactly the same exercise, but to ask you, what are the prices you paid today? Not what you paid a year ago, or two years ago, five years ago. Because I can tell you, one of the biggest prices I paid in the past because of my low financial IQ is that my company went bankrupt. It went bankrupt and I went from being a millionaire on, uh, uh, at the age of 23 to being a millionaire on the other side, so minus a million almost, at the age of 25 with all the emotional and mental uh, prices that you pay for that. But I also had to fire 25 people, which was the worst experience, I think, of my life. And that was all due to very low financial IQ that I had in the past. Today I have a better IQ, financial IQ, but there's, for sure I don't have the financial IQ of Richard Branson or Warren Buffett or Bill Gates. And I know that because my bank account is not exactly like theirs yet, right? So my financial IQ is maybe higher than it was 20 years ago or five years ago, but it's not yet as high. So what are the prices that you pay in your bank account, in your, in your life, personal, fin uh, uh, emotional, mental, and financial because of your low financial IQ right now, where it is right now? So maybe again, worries, it's still something that is there for you. Maybe you're, uh, you're, you're feeling insecure because you don't know what to do. Maybe you're doing fine financially, but you don't know what to do with the extra money because you don't have enough financial IQ to invest that money, for example. So what are the prices you pay today? I'm going to give you a minute, just pause this video and write down what are the prices you pay today because of your financial IQ where it is right now, okay? Compared to where it can be. So take a minute for that and then come back to me. All right, so welcome back. And uh, there are good news and bad news. I know that you didn't like the exercise so far. I don't like it too, but I'm still doing it once every year or so. But, uh, but there are good news and bad news about it. So first of all, right now, in the financial situation that we are right now, you might not recognize that. You might not see that, but there is a huge opportunity right now if you're willing to raise your financial IQ because there is massive, excuse me, massive amount of money that are moving around and you can be in the right place to receive them if you're, you know, you know how to grab an opportunity and you have the right uh, financial IQ for that. The bad news is that if you're not going to uh, increase your financial IQ and fast, uh, not that just this wave of opportunity is going to pass you by, it might leave you in a pretty bad situation. It's pretty bad. Um, so what I'd like to do now is Let's imagine that you're not raising, not increasing your financial IQ. You stay where you are today and you know, I'm sure that you have enough ideas about how this financial situation is going to go and uh, what happens. And what can you predict that if you will not raise your financial IQ will be the prices three years from now? Okay, three years from now. Um, for example, uh, you might not have a business three years from now. You might not, you might be broke. Okay, you might not have a job if you're, a, if you're an employee 
three years from now. So that's, that's prices that you might pay. It might be that uh, your house, that right now you're still paying mortgage for it, let's assume, will be worth so little uh, uh, three years from now that if you want to pay back, the, even if you sell the house, you will still have to pay back the mortgage for many, many, many years to come. Those are not imagination. Those are happening right now. If, if you're not raising your financial IQ and you're going to retire, it doesn't matter if it's 10, 20 or 30 years from now, how much money will you keep or will you have for your retirement? Most people will have very, very little for sure not to survive the next 20 or 30 years of their lives, not even survive it. So those are possible prices, but I'm sure that you can figure out some more. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to make you aware. If I don't change, this is where I'm going to be so we can get you motivated enough to change. Okay, so take a moment, write down what will, the, will be the prices you might pay, might pay, if you will not increase your financial IQ in the next three years. Okay, this is what's going to happen. The middle class are the ones that are going to suffer the most from whatever happens financially. The, if, the financial, if the financial situation is going to get worse, if, uh, uh, or at least not getting better, the poor people, it's not going to make a, bit of a big difference for them. The poor people will just get poorer or will stay the same. You know, it's not going to make a big difference. They know how to survive on a very little, if you want. <clears throat> The rich people, it's not going to affect them so much. They might lose a little bit, uh, but most of them will actually gain a lot because their financial IQ is, uh, is high, so they will know how to uh, use the opportunities. But even if they lose a bit, that doesn't make a big difference to their lifestyle. It just makes a, big di a, a bit of a difference to their extras, to their surplus, if you want. But for the middle class people, uh, that might make a difference between being a middle class and being poor. And a lot of the middle class is going to move all the way down to poor. And that is already happening. It happened in the past. It's happening right now. And it's going to, in my opinion, at least in many of the, of the economists that I'm following and listening to, it's going to get worse. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to understand, first of all, that money doesn't disappear. People are keep on saying, oh, this company lost $2 billion. It disappeared. It didn't disappear. It went somewhere. Money always moves. And it always moves in a one direction, one direction only. It moves to the, from the hands of those with low financial IQ to the hands of those people with high financial IQ. That's how it always happened. That will, that's how it will always happen. And you can choose in which, one of the, which, where, which place you want to be. The place where the money moves from you or the place where money comes towards you. So in my suggestion, by the way, this is again, this is happening already, just accelerating all the time. And it's accelerating faster and faster right now, the way it looks. Now, what I suggest for you is stop worrying about the world. You know, oh, we need to save everybody. First, worry about your own world, then take care of others. It's like in the plane that they tell you, first put your uh, oxygen mask on you before you put it on others. So really, financially, that's what you should do. First put it on you. First fix your situation before you help others. And uh, he, instead of worrying about the economy, start worrying about your own economy because you don't have control about, uh, over the economy in total, but you have lots of control, total control over your own economy. So I suggest that if you don't like your lifestyle, then start looking at your results. And if you don't like your results, start looking at your actions. And if you don't like your actions, start looking at your, you know, at your attitudes. And if you don't like your attitudes, this is where you need to start looking, which is the financial IQ. So it's, it's a chain. Financial IQ starts and it goes all the way to your attitude, your actions, your results and to your lifestyle. So if you do, if, if you want, let's say just as an example, if you want to double your income, do you think that you can do that with the same information, with the same knowledge that you had so far? I mean, if you could do that, you would have done it anyway. That's what we're seeing all the time in our trainings is that people come and they get new information that they didn't have. And now they can create the results they always wanted. But you need that information first. You have to get new information. Uh, but when you know, when you learn the new information, when you change your mindset from the mindset of the middle class to the mindset of the rich, then there's a lot of opportunities that are, that are opening for you right now. Just imagine yourself two or three or four years from now when you're totally financially free, when you don't have to work for your money anymore. You go to work because it's your passion, because it's your contribution, because that's what you love doing, but not because you have to. You can get there. I got there in 15 months. Why can't you get there in two or three or four years or even faster? We have students that got it faster than us. Okay? There are students that are competing with those students in order to get it even faster. It takes some time, but you can, all, you can get there. It's possible. I can show you how. Okay. Actually, let me give you a couple of numbers. What you need in order to become financially free, and I, I don't know you personally, I don't know who I'm talking right now to, but our target audience usually needs about three, three to 4,000 euros a month 
earning it passively in order to become financially free. Meaning you don't have to work anymore. If you can generate this amount of money passively for your business or for your family every single month without working for that, I'm pretty sure that you're financially free or very close to that. Maybe you need a little bit more, maybe you need a little bit less. Okay, depends on your age, depends on your family situation, depends on your lifestyle. For us, when we wanted to become financially free, amount in between was the amount that we needed to generate passively in order to become financially free. So you see, you don't need to generate millions and millions or billions or even hundreds of thousands. All you need to generate is 3,000 to 4,000 euros. If it's dollar, just multiply it a little bit with, with uh, one third and you'll see the numbers. And that's what you need to get passively, you know, as a passive income, not as an active income, in order to become financially free for the rest of your life. So this is not an amount in the sky, that's not something that you don't, you cannot achieve. And by the way, when you start achieving this number, when you start creating it, you, you can stop working or you can keep on working and then every amount of money that you make every month goes on top of it and that's when wealth is accumulated very fast. That's why we could become millionaires less than a year after we became financially free because we kept on working, we didn't, you know, sit on the beach and drink margarita all day, although we could, but we didn't and all the active or working income start to generate for, generating for that for us wealth in a very accelerated uh, speed if you want so uh, okay so what i'd like to do right now is to give you a chance to implant in your body how does it feel uh, in your pro body in your brain how does it feel to become financially free and what does it mean to become financially free so what i'd like to do with you right now is a little visual visualization it's not going to be too long it's not going to go very deep but it's going to make sure that you start looking with your unconscious mind on what financial freedom means for you and how can you start working unconsciously to make it happen. So the only way if that if, uh, if you want this to work is you'll have to actually close your eyes and listen to my voice until I bring you back. So on the screen there is going to be nothing very interesting, you're not going to see me anymore. So for the next few minutes just listen to my voice, close your eyes and just relax and allow it to happen. So take a moment now to just close your eyes. Close your eyes and take a deep breath in and out. Take another deep breath in and out. And take another deep, deep, deep breath in. Hold it and let it go quickly. Now imagine that you know the rules. Imagine that you have the ability that day to day you can spot opportunities that others don't see. Just put yourself in that position of a person that has a very high financial IQ. Imagine that you have people coming to you with ideas that otherwise they wouldn't be coming with. That you can see that in your own experience, just by changing the way you're leveraging, just by adding that extra bit of value, you can double your results again, and again, and again. By focusing 90% of your time on the critical elements, you're going to get wealth that otherwise you would totally miss by investing it in the wrong place. If you had that kind of level of financial IQ in one year, what kind of life would you be living? Would you still be doing the same things you're doing right now? Would you do things differently? How would you do them differently? How would you be spending your day? Who would you meet with? Meet with? What kind of people would you have around you? What would you own? What kind of assets would you own? What would you contribute? to a better world? And what kind of numbers would you see in your bank account? And just for a couple of minutes, just let yourself feel how it feels to have a high financial IQ. How does it feel when you're totally financially free? How does your life look like? And just take mental notes for the different areas of your life.
And when you're ready, just take a deep breath in, and all the breath out, open your eyes, and welcome back. And while it's still fresh in your mind, those pictures that you have of being financially free and high financial like you, take a moment right now and take your pen and a piece of paper and write down for yourself how would your life look like when you're financially free. What is the vision for yourself that you just saw? And take a few moments for that, pause the video, and I'll see you when you're ready. So welcome back and I hope you like the vision of your future. You need to get really excited about it. It needs to make you happy to think about it because your life is going to change when you become financially free. And if you're not seeing it, if you're not having it in front of your eyes, it will be very hard for you to get there. So you want to create a picture, a very vivid picture of you. And, you know, we did it just for once, but you can repeat that part again and again and again to implant this, this picture, this vision in your mind, this visualization. It's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm.